Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of the Daily Fantasy Scramble. I am your host, Sean Ihaz, Cactus Jack 2 on DraftKings, here to talk about UFC Fight Night 111 from Singapore, Holly Holm against Betch Kohea. Excuse the prop comedy joke, but this is a Mickey Mouse main event. Um, there are at least four or five other fights on this card that should be the main event, but we get Holm and Kohea. And super early, especially for people on the West Coast, even here on the East Coast, it's an early card. Um, but DraftKings, the, the tournaments aren't as bad as I thought they were going to be. There is um, some decent tournaments worth playing, um, and the cash game action should be there as usual. Uh, it should be a normal uh, fight pass type card, it's looking like. In terms of construction, the, mid, the mid-tier really doesn't exist. There's not a ton of guys in the mid-tier. That's actually uh, the lower end of the mid-tier is where I'm looking for some of these upsets. Um, but Stars and Scrubs seems to be forced upon you, especially if you're playing multiple lineups. Uh, some of the lines are just crazy. Uh, so we'll get into that and jump into the here in the scramble. Three plays I like on DraftKings priced at 8000 or below. And first up is the guy I'm getting a number seven uh, ranked fighter in his division, Dung Hyun Kim, the stun gun against Colby Covington. Dung Hyun Kim is 7,700 on DraftKings. He is a plus 185 underdog. Covington's the minus 225 favorite. That seems really, really wide to me. Um, Covington is a good prospect, but he's a prospect still. This is going to be a huge step up from taking down Brian Barbarina 12 times and taking down uh, Max Griffin six times. He can win the fight, but it's close, and he shouldn't be this big of a favorite, in my opinion. Um, Covington is a great wrestler, uh, and he's shown it. Tran- you know, his wrestling skills clearly translate to the UFC. Duncan Kim is a very high-level judoka. Great hips, uh, as all judokas have. Uh, it's not out of question that he can take down Covington. And my question is, what's going to happen if Covington ends up on his back? Can he get up? Dung Hyun Kim also has tons of power in his hands. Um, it's a really interesting play, especially when you're hurting for underdogs. Dung Hyun Kim, in a fight that is closer than the pricing, looks like 7,700. Covington's beaten up a bunch of, you know, he's a high he's a high caliber prospect. Other than the Barbarina win, I don't rank any of his opponents very highly. And Barbarina is, you know, a middle-of-the-road UFC fighter at best. It's a huge step up. And I don't understand the narrative that Covington's going to walk through Kim. If he wins the fight, it wouldn't wouldn't shock me. I like the value on Kim, and Covington needs to prove it to me against a high-caliber fighter. And I think Covington's going to be really popular. I mentioned I've heard that narrative where people are expecting Covington to blow through Dung Hyun Kim. It's a popularity thing. Uh, I'm just, I'm not all in on the hype yet. I'll take my chances on Dung Hyun Kim, the proven commodity. Uh, by the way, he's coming off that win against Tarek Safadine, uh, who's also on this card. People are giving him a lot of shit for that. He was a year off before that fight. Clearly didn't look his best. He was serving his time in the South Korean Army. It's not like he was injured. So that little bit of layoff maybe just, you know, kind of explains that fight. Maybe I'm explaining it away a little bit. Safadine is in some boring fights, though. It's just his... That tri-star point fighting style can happen. Duncan Kim, heavy hands, can take down Covington, is the proven commodity. I like the value at 7,700. Uh, second pick in the scramble, we are going to a fighter on a four-fight losing streak. God, we are hurting for options this week. Russell Doan, and I believe, let me double-check the price, I believe it's 7,600. 7,600 for Russell Doan. He takes on Quan Ho Kwok. Uh, this comes to... Russell Doan's back is clearly against the wall. He's lost four straight fights. Um, he did take the fight against uh, Mirsad Bektic on a, a week's notice, I believe. Um, his other losses to Pedro Munhos, who got caught in a sub. Uh, he got decision by Luke San- by Jared Sanders, not Luke Sanders, and a decision against Yuri Alcantara. Um, he did take down Yuri Alcantara six times, I believe. He did a bunch of takedowns in that fight. Doan, if he's going to win, is going to get takedowns. Quan Ho Kwok was just taken down 11 times by Brett Johns. Johns is a better wrestler than Doan, but Doan is going to try and get this fight to the ground. And as we all know, 
those grappling points reign supreme on DraftKings. So I like the upside at 7,600. Quan Ho Kwok is, again, a prospect who I think came in a little bit overhyped. You will have the home court advantage. But it's a 135-pound fight. I don't see it ending a finish. Not a ton of these fights do it at the lower weight classes. Don't's going to try and grapple. Kwok has shown considerable holes in his takedown defense. Um, if Don wins, he should score very, very well at 7,600. Um, also fights out of Hawaii with Max Holloway. Um, again, there's just enough there to make me want to take a shot on Russell Doan in tournaments, at least. I don't think he's going to make... He might make my cash game team just because of the pricing. Um, there are a lot of high-priced fighters I do like, but he's on the fringe. Um, at that price range, he is... He's one of the safer options to score points because, as I mentioned, I don't think this fight is going to end in a finish. So I like Russell Doan by decision. Um, again, just like the last fight, if Clock wins, it wouldn't shock me. But if Doan does win, as I said, he will score with grappling points. So Russell Doan is the second pick here in the scramble. Third pick, we're going to try and save you a considerable amount of money. We're going to go all the way down to 6900 and Alka Sasaki. Um, Super tough guy coming off that fight against uh, Wilson Hayes, where he just he showed his his, his determination that he was a tough guy. Um, came back towards towards the end of that fight, obviously nowhere near enough to win. Um, if I'm remembering it right, but he's fighting a guy in Justin Scoggins who was beating up Pedro Munoz before. He does what he's done a bunch. He goes for a takedown and he gets caught in submissions. Olka Sasaki has submissions on his record. He has a decent sub game. It's a little unorthodox. It just it, this is 125 pounds. This is Scoggins trying to make 125 pounds again after he said he would never do that. That makes me nervous. Um, he's going to try and go all the way back down to that ridiculous cut. Um, there's just enough in this fight. That for 6,900, I think Alka Sasaki can get to value. Um, Scoggins could control range and pick apart Sasaki. He just hasn't been able, he hasn't shown the patience to do that for 15 minutes. At some point, this fight can end up in a grapple uh, into a grappling match where Sasaki just uses his toughness to outlast Scoggins, who I think is going to have cardio issues again. 6,900 is a price I'm willing to pay. Um, as a punt in both tournaments and cash, I think he's viable. Uh, there's just not a lot way down at the bottom. I think Sasaki is your best option. So that's it for the three picks here in the scramble. I like Dunhyun Kim at 7,700. The number seven ranked guy I'm getting as a dog is always interesting. 7,600 for Russell Doan, a guy who, if he wins, will score a lot of points via the grappling. And Alka Sasaki as your punt play at 6,900 um, because Justin Scoggins is making a huge, huge cut and has shown he can be subbed. So those are your three picks here in the scramble, guys. If you want full breakdowns on all the fights, I'm also a co-host on the Loudmouth MMA podcast. Please go check that out wherever you uh, listen and download your podcasts. Uh, good luck in your contest, and I will see you next week.